हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अर्पिता करवा डॉट कॉम इंडिया स्पाइनेस्ट ऑनलाइन कोचिंग फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द डिटेल समरी ऑफ किंग लेयर न फ्रेंड्स किंग लेयर इज अमंग्स द मोस्ट फेमस ट्रेजिडीज रिटन बाय शेक्सपियर इट इज डिराइव फ्रॉम द लेजेंड ऑफ लेयर ऑफ ब्रिटेन अ माइथोलॉजिकल प्री रोमन सेल्टिक किंग वेरी फेमस मॉडर्न राइटर मिस्टर जॉर्ज बर्नर्ड शो आफ्टर रीडिंग किंग लेयर रोड नो मैन विल एवर राइट अ बेटर ट्रेजिडी देन लेयर During the 17th century Shakespeare's tragic ending was much criticized an alternative version of King Lear was written by Nahum Tate in which the leading characters survived the Edgar and Cordelia were married in which the leading characters survived and Edgar and Cordelia were married now we are going to soon meet these two characters and from the restoration until the mid 19th century the performance history of King Lear is not the story of Shakespeare's version but instead a popular adaptation by Nahum Tate named the history of King Lear Now let's quickly discuss the characters friends the protagonist of this play is King Lear he's an old king of England and he loves to hear his praises his two daughters butter him a lot and take all his wealth from him and king lear has to bear the consequences of his actions until his death now friends king lear has three daughters the eldest one is called goneril she is greedy for her father's wealth and keeps praising him the second daughter is regan her character is similar to goneril's and the third and youngest daughter is cordelia she is not like her sisters and loves her father very much now friends next character is called glaucuster He's the courtman of King Lear and helps him with all the decisions. His nature is also the same as King Lear's. He also has two sons and fails to identify who loves him truly. One of his sons is called Edgar and the other one is called Edmund. Now friends, Edmund is called bastard because he's born out of a wedlock, meaning Edmund's mother is not Gloucester's wife. Edmund is very angry because he's a bastard and he tries to ruin the relationship of Gloucester and Edgar. There's another character called Kent He is also a courtman of King Lear and very faithful to him. King Lear banishes him. However, he comes back in a disguise and still serves him. Friends, there are two other characters: Goneril's husband Albany, who is a very kind man, and Regan's husband Cornwalls, who is a very cunning man. Now, moving on. uh we'll have a look at the story so king lear the king of england was growing old he decided that he'll divide his wealth and his kingdom among his three daughters goneril regan and cordelia for this he arranged a ceremony it was a huge ceremony where a lot of people were present along with lear's favorite courtman kent there were two gentlemen duke of burgundy and the king of france who came to propose to cordelia for the wedding now ideally king lear should have distributed the wealth equally but no He said that I will give my wealth to the daughter who loves me the most. Hearing this, Goneril and Regan said that they love their father more than anything in this world. King Lear anyway liked people who praised him. He was so happy to hear this. However, Cordelia was not like her people-pleasing sisters. She said to King Lear that I love you as a daughter should love her father, not less, not more. Now King Lear got angry at her and decided that she wouldn't get a penny from his wealth. Hearing this, Duke of Burgundy who had come to propose to Cordelia for marriage returns back. However, the Prince of France says that he still wants to marry her. Here, Kent comes to Cordelia's rescue and tries to make King Lear understand what he is doing, but King Lear was so angry that he banished him. On the other hand, Cordelia gets married to the Prince of France. Now friends uh, King Lear led a very luxurious lifestyle but now his wealth was divided between his two eldest daughters so what he did was he kept 100 knights to himself further he decided that he will stay at his daughter's homes one by one Now friends I told you that Gloucester was also a courtman of Lear his story runs parallel to that of King Lear he also makes the same mistake as made by King Lear that he banishes the good kid and trusts the bad one Gloucester had a son called Edmund who was not his legal son because he was born out of wedlock or out of an affair Edmund tried to provoke Gloucester against his legal son Edgar saying that Edgar wants to kill you Now Gloucester gets convinced and orders to get Edgar killed 
Edgar gets scared and runs away to the countryside and starts living under a false name called Poor Tom. Now King Lear comes and stays with Goneril along with his hundred knights. Here Kent comes back in a disguise but King Lear does not recognize him and takes him in service. Friends, now Goneril tells her employees not to give any special treatment to King Lear. She asks her father that you don't really need hundred knights. Why don't you reduce them to fifty? This makes King Lear feel insulted and he leaves her house. He says you said that you loved me the most in the ceremony but it does not look like this. King Lear says that he will go and stay with Regan now. Now Goneril sends a letter to Regan that her father is going to reach your place. Regan is worse than her sister. She tells her father that I won't let you keep more than 25 nights. This irritates and angers King Lear even more. He feels insulted. On the other hand, Cornwall, Regan's husband, locks the place where King Lear was staying which finally makes him homeless. Friends, notice what Regan did here. She not just insulted King Lear but also made him homeless. Now, when all this happened, Ken was not with her. However, he starts searching for King Lear. While searching for Lear, Kent meets a gentleman who might have seen Lear. So, the gentleman tells Kent about where he saw King Lear. So, as a token of gratitude, Kent gives away his wallet to this gentleman and also requests the gentleman to give Kent's ring to King Lear's youngest daughter, Cordelia. Now, King Lear is walking in a storm because he's homeless now. Kent finally finds him. Kent takes him to a hut. Now, can you guess who this hut belongs to? Friends, this hut belongs to Edgar, Gloucester's legal son. He is living with a fake name, Tom. And now, on the other hand, Gloucester tells his bastard son, Edmund, that he has received a letter from France that an attack is about to happen in England. I must go and help King Lear. Now, friends, like I said, that Edmund will betray his father. He goes and gives this information to Cornwall. Regan's husband, and they start plotting for King Lear's death. On the other hand, Kent tells uh, King Lear to immediately go to Dover, where his uh, youngest daughter Cordelia is waiting with French army, so that they can defeat the attackers of Goneril and Regan. Kent also tells him that his two daughters and their husbands are planning to kill him. Now, this news that Cordelia is helping Lear with the French army reaches Cornwall, Regan's husband. He orders to capture Gloucester. Further, he sends Edmund and Goneril to Albany so that uh, he can help them in tackling the situation. Now, friend, I told you that Albany was a kind man. He refused to help them and tried to convince his wife that uh, what she is doing with her father is not right. Meanwhile, Gloucester was captured. Regan and Cornwall took his eyes out and threw them away. His eyeballs were taken out using a sharp object. Two servants took pity on him and sent him off to live with his legal son, Edgar, who is disguised as poor Tom. Now, friends, Gloucester still does not know that he is my legal son, Edgar. Now, like I said, Goneril is trying to convince her husband, Albany, to help against King Lear, but he is not agreeing. Exactly then comes the news that Cornwall is dead. He is killed by a servant. Now, friends, Edmund is a player. Both Goneril and Regan like him. Regan is a widow now and she wants to get married to Edmund. On the other hand, Goneril is also ready to kill her husband Albany in order to get married to Edmund. On the other hand, Cordelia brings the entire French army to support her father King Lear. However, her father does not want to see her. Why? Because of regret. In the beginning of the story, we discussed how King Lear insulted Cordelia and sent her away. Prince Cordelia sends a team to search for King Lear. The team finds him and he is brought to the French camp where he is taken care of. At this place, King Lear meets Cordelia again and asks for her forgiveness. It's a very emotional scene of a father reuniting with his daughter. Now, friends, a battle happens between Cordelia's army and England's army. England's army was led by Edmund. Unfortunately, Cordelia's army loses the battle and she and King Lear are captured and imprisoned. Edmund sends a captain with an order to kill both Cordelia and King Lear in the prison itself.
Now friends, we have reached the end of the story. In the end, Edmund and Edgar have a battle and Edmund dies. Before dying, Edmund says that he has sent his captain to kill Cordelia and King Lear. Hearing this, Albany sends his soldiers to stop the captain. So friends, when Albany's soldiers reach there, they see that King Lear is crying with the body of Cordelia. He says that he was able to kill the captain but could not save his daughter and with this King Lear also dies. On the other hand, Gloucester still does not know that poor Tom is his legal son Edgar. According to him, he is Tom. Edgar goes and tells Gloucester that it's me, your son Edgar. But sadly, when this happens, Gloucester is on his deathbed. He's happy to know that Edgar is here but he's sad because of what he did to him. Now friends, I already told you that Goneril and Regan both wanted to get married to Edmund. For this, Goneril prisons her sister Regan. But when she gets to know that even Edmund is dead, she kills herself too. Even Kent dies. So in the end, only two people survive, Albany and Edgar. And in the future, Albany becomes the King of England. So this is how this famous novel by William Shakespeare ends. And it's kind of a sad ending where most of the characters have been dead. So I hope you enjoyed it and with this we come to the end of it. We'll meet soon in the next lecture and till the time we meet next. Happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.